They're coming for us. Get them. Get them. They're coming in hot. I got one. I got one. Don't get cocky, kid. But it's a Pop Bros podcast. What do you mean it's a podcast? You haven't been you haven't been shooting? They're all over the place. Well, no, but, but they've got all sorts of good shows like Pencil and Ink Reviews and The Guy Huddle and Players vs. Podcasts. I mean, was I supposed to? Yes. The, 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 what? How many podcasts do they have? There's tons. You got other ones like the Accidental Wrestling Fan and Take Aim Outdoors. That kind of sounds like we should make podcasts, not war. What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we're speaking the language of bromance. So, so Sean, I've decided that there ha- there's, there's been a running theme when it comes. There's been a running conflict in our show. And what has that conflict been? It's been man versus nature. Man versus nature. We had some bears. We had some bonobos. We've got, you know, this has kind of been the month of nature versus man. It has been. It has been. And so I thought to myself, in, in all these stories, nature comes out nature comes out on top. You know, nature's the winner. There has to be some instances in this world where man says, No, no, fuck you, nature. <laughs> fuck you, nature. We want it's it's our time. It's time of man. So like are you s- are you saying like man is putting like these animals up for trial or something or putting them on the stand? Oh my God, Sean! You you took the words right out of my mouth. That's right. As if as if you've reached into my brain, into my cerebral cortex, and plucked plucked the thought like a pen sieve. <laughs> it's a Harry Potter reference. Like a pen sieve, you just yanked the thought directly from my mind. Yes, I'm talking about putting animals on trial. This time, this is man's time. This is where this is where we put animals where they belong. And that's apparently in a, court <laughs> in, in the defendant. Yeah, in court. So is this is this similar to like whenever my dog chews on my wife's hat, and so I have to chase him around the house to discipline him? Is it that kind of trial? No. Or when I ask him, "Did you chew on this? Did you chew on this dog?" And he just looks <laughs> no, at me. It's not just you yelling at the dog, <laughs> and then the, and then the dog just puts its head down, <laughs> and then both of you go on with your lives. No, we're we're not talking. It's not that kind of trial. Okay. No, we're talking about an actual trial, an actual trial with money involved and uh, and juries <laughs> and lawyers. <laughs> Is it a jury of the animals' peers? Or? You know, you would think so it, because you you know you're like, hey, jury, your peers, right? No, no, not jury, not jury of your of your animal peers, Mister Pig or <laughs> Mister Cow or Mister whatever it shall be. It's a jury of your accused or accusers peers. <laughs> so I found this article on Wired and this is from September of 2014 and this is Matt Simon as the writer and the headline is Europe's insane history of putting animals on trial and executing them. <laughs> it's really just an excuse for a big like pig uh pig cookout. <laughs> Right. Like, well, we need an excuse to kill this pig so we can eat it. AKA the great barbecues of the Middle <laughs> Ages. There's a football game that's going on this Sunday and we need some food. <laughs> the big jousting match. Yeah. The king has ordered 20 uh, briskets and he wants them now. That pig stole something from me. Let's put him on trial. We only have 19. I've been assaulted. <laughs> By this cow, he licked me in the face. We should kill it. It's like you don't need to put it on trial. You don't need an excuse to butcher your own cattle. Yeah, you. It's it's yours. It's domesticated. Like we we won. We won the <laughs> battle. We keep them in. We keep them in a field surrounded by a fence. <laughs> it's like, do you know who says that, Gregory? Somebody who doesn't believe in justice. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, they're already incarcerated. It's true. Basically, we're just there's apparently there's <laughs> there's you know we have the regular prison population of cows and pigs, and then we have 
uh, the uh, the death row for for pigs and cows, even though they all end up there. Apparently, some need to go there a bit faster than others. I just imagine. Do, do you think back and then they put those, uh, you know, those old wigs that the men used to wear, like the judge? Oh, wear? like put one on a cow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The cow's like, I say we love go. <laughs> All right, Bessie, I know it wasn't you that stole the grass, and you're going to put up a hell of a fight today, and those jury, they're going to find you innocent. It's going to be a fair trial. That's right, Bessie. Justice will see. Justice will be served this day. (laughs) Mid-rare. With a side of mashed potatoes. (laughs) They walk they walk Betsy up and the bell rings ding 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 ding. <laughs> Is that you confessing, Betsy? <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> Do I have a witness? Witness. All right. Tan convicted. Let's eat this pig. <laughs> so the story starts out on December fifth, thirteen seventy nine, two herds of pigs at a French monastery grew agitated and killed a man. Named, oh, God, I hate French names. <laughs> Perina Mouet, or Muet. As was custom at the time, the pigs, the actual murderers, and those that had simply looked on, <laughs> were tried for their horrible crime. So not only the pigs that did it, we're not talking about just the pigs that did it, we're talking about the pigs that watched them do it. They're accessories to the crime. <laughs> right? They're like, no, Good Samaritan Law. You forgot about the Good Samaritan Law. Stupid pigs. Supposed to be the smartest animal that we've ever domesticated. But apparently you're not that smart. Otherwise you would have read here. There's just a pig eating its slop and I see some cop like banging on the the (laughs) fence. You did nothing, sir. And that's why you will go to hell. (laughs) (laughs) They were tried for their horrible crime and sentenced to death. You see, with their, quote, cries and aggressive actions, the onlookers, quote, showed that they approved of the assault and mustn't be allowed to escape justice. (laughs) So apparently, so, so the two, so apparently there was two pigs and they were the ringleaders. Like, they're inside. You know what they're afraid of? They're afraid of revolution. I think that's what this is teaching us. <laughs> There's going to be a revolution. Yeah, they're, they're afraid that the pigs are going to become self-aware. And so they're waiting for that. They're waiting for that Guerrera of pigs, that Chava Guerrera of pigs to <laughs> show up with this little beret and be like, guys, look, you know what? We don't have to feed. We don't just have to feed eat the slop that they give us and then one pig's like but i like the slop they give us he smacks him <laughs> well i mean it is good slop i'm not i'm not i mean you know it i mean it's pretty good i'm not not saying that but i'm just <laughs> you know we we could do more Let, let's break for 10 we'll eat and we'll come we'll, we'll come back to this conversation because now i'm hungry thanks <laughs> thanks brian i appreciate it i was yeah. trying to have a speech <laughs> and rile us up for some revolution. I was I was in a moment. I was in a zone. I was channeling my inner, my inner, you know, I, I got the, I spent all this time. I ate a guy. I stole his beret so I could wear this and, you know, really be in the moment. And you fucked me. You fucked me, Brian. Scoot over so I can eat. This is good stuff. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. I would hate to have missed out on this. You know, giving a speech really makes you hungry. You'd think eating a guy would fill you up, but no, not so much. Kind of goes right through you. The slop, though. (laughs) The (laughs) monastery's friar couldn't bear to suffer the economic loss of all those pigs, so he wrote a letter to the Duke of Burgundy pleading for him to pardon the onlookers. The friar (laughs) would allow the three murderers to suffer their fate. The Duke, let quote, lent a a gracious ear to his supplication in order that the punishment should be remitted and the swine released. Records don't show just how the three pigs were executed, though it was common for the offending animals <laughs> to be hanged or burned alive for their crimes. Of course they were burned alive. They were pigs. 
Yeah. They were burned alive on a spit roast. They were smoked and roasted and had an apple in their mouth. And... <laughs> it's kind of like kind of like you know when they like in uh like in the Green Mile when they when they wet the sponge and they put it on your head and then they strap you down in the electric <laughs> chair like they're leading the pig up to the spit roast <laughs> and they wash it they wash it in barbecue sauce and <laughs> stick an apple in its mouth. <laughs> pig has no idea. And they're like, no, this this helps ease the burden. This helps. <laughs> this makes it more painless. We swear. <laughs> Somebody grab the plate and napkins. We're going to be eating in about an hour and a half. <laughs> Such is Europe's shameful and largely forgotten history of putting animal criminals on trial <laughs> and either executing them. You know why it's forgotten, right? Because they're like, did we seriously do this? <laughs> did we really spend time? <laughs> we, yeah, we did this. Did we spend money on this? Did we pay a guy to say these pigs should be put to death? <laughs> There's there's some lawyer from the 1300s who made a shit ton of money doing this. Right? He's wearing a butcher's apron. He's like, I think these <laughs> pigs should des- deserve to die. He was a lawyer and a barbecuer. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Who's that? That's the town butcher. Also the town prosecutor. Also the lead <laughs> district attorney. He's really making a lot of money. I don't, you know, it's a good thing we have this guy. There's a lot of criminal animals in this area. Uh, putting animal criminals on trial and either executing them or, in the case, if we're talking about plagues of insects, ordering them to leave town, not only by a certain day, but by an exact time. So, <laughs> so, the, so the pigs, they kill, and they're like, we're putting you on the spit roast, and fuck you, pig, and... This is what you get for, you know, stealing an apple. And then we put that apple in your mouth. <laughs> you want that ma- apple so bad, don't you? Like for the insects, they're like, okay. Yeah, for the, for the for the insects, like, you know, there's a there's a swarm of flies and somebody walks up there with a piece of paper and he's like, this is a writ of exile. <laughs> you, you need to leave. That doesn't work for the mosquitoes in my house. <laughs> Senator Senator, they're not listening. They're not they're not listening. <laughs> Get the gun. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work for the mosquitoes outside my house. Like I can't walk outside and be like, I exile you. Boom. You need to all of you need to leave my house by four o'clock. Ooh, <laughs> there's gonna be something happen. Such irrational barbarism is hard to fathom. But as early as 824, all the way up to the middle of the 18th century, animals were held to the same moral standards as humans, suffering the same capital punishments and rotting in the same jails. <laughs> okay, so so Greg goes out one night and gets super shit-faced, you know, and accidentally breaks a window, so he gets thrown into the, the drunk tank. <laughs> <laughs> He wakes up from his drunken stumper to be snuggling with this pig who got thrown in jail for murder. Careful. Wakes up, he's, you know, <laughs> wakes up cuddling the pig. He's like, oh, man, that must have been a real bender last night. What the fuck happened? <laughs> and then, then he wakes up. The constable up. walks up. He's like, careful, we got Susie for cornhole <laughs> Yeah. So they say, all right, you know, it was it was bad enough, you know, you broke a window, so we had you for uh um you know, breaking public property. But when you came in here you started fucking the pig, so now we have you for bestiality. And the sentence for that is hanging. Oh, oh, we're not we're not we're not to the bestiality. You you wait for that. That's that's, <laughs> oh, there's that's bestiality? the golden moment. Oh, oh well, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting to the golden moment. No I'm not I mean I'm burying the lead here, but Oh, oh, it's coming. <laughs> that made it funny. <laughs> Europe's worst serial offenders, it seems, were pigs. According to E.P. Evans, in his sprawling history, the criminal prosecution and capital punishment of animals. Uh, from 1906. 1906? Yes. Apparently, the book was written in 1906. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. I think I was gonna say they didn't have another trial in 1906, right? <laughs> 110 years ago, they're still trying pigs. <laughs> we built the telephone. Can we please get past yeah. this? 
No, that pig looked at me funny. Let it go, Brian. There's a guy in Detroit. I think he made a car. Can we please say that we've evolved? And for God's sakes, please just don't put the wig on it. <laughs> this is America. <laughs> that's why the that's why the pilgrims left. <laughs> it wasn't because of religious persecution. It's like I can't take another one of these damn animal trials. <laughs> First we were burning witches, and now we're burning pigs. I think we just like to burn things. <laughs> you know what? And and I just don't know if I'm cool with it. Uh, quote, <laughs> the frequency with which pigs were brought to trial and educated to death was owing in a great measure to the freedom with which they were permitted to run about the streets and to their immense number. So basically we're scared of the pigs, and so what recourse do we as humans have? Against the against the terrible scourge of pigs, but to sue them because they have so much property, right? That concept is in their head that they own this street. We'll see who owns this street. <laughs> pigs just like I don't fucking care. You're gonna feed me on the way to this trial, whatever. Pigs like, I, yeah, I'm a pig. Just dump some trash out here. Let me root around in it and go about my business. Uh, Evans catalogs incident after incident in which pigs chewed off ears. And noses, and even killed children. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, I know right. pigs are pretty. I mean, they're. I've always heard that if you fall into a, a group of pigs and they start attacking or biting, they kind of go almost like shark. They have like a feeding frenzy. I've heard that too. I've heard pigs eat fucking anything. Yeah. So I mean, it's pretty. That's pretty common nowadays for people to get hurt by that. <laughs> Maybe we need to bring these animal trials back to put them back in their place. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting they're getting they're getting they're getting too crazy they're getting too much power we show up at wisconsin and start suing pigs or start <laughs> suing cows we can go to new zealand and start suing the sheep yeah new zealand's full of sheep they said there's, there's what like five sheep to every one person one sheep for loving the other four for shearing <laughs> <laughs> see you keep going to the beast <laughs> Interspecies erotica, asshole. (laughs) (laughs) One swine going so far as to eat a child, although it was a Friday. Does that make it better? A serious violation of church decree that was urged uh, that was urged by the prosecuting attorney and accepted by the court as a serious aggravation of the porker's offense. (laughs) <laughs> so apparently they just they're like he ate a child and i mean on a friday <laughs> you know we might overlook this on a monday or tuesday but it was a friday that's what i'm saying like that was probably said in court like there was a guy see you thought you lived you thought you lived in a world that you knew but no sean <laughs> you live in a world where somebody at some point in time had said in a court of law, on the record, <laughs> he ate a child, and on a Friday, and then people are like, oh, not a Friday, it's the start of the weekend, that kid didn't have school for two days. <laughs> There's some lawyer that had to, you know, fight that battle, goes home to his wife, Margaret, Margaret's like, oh, how was your day, sweetie? I... Uh, I Honey, we're we're moving to America. I cannot deal with these fuckers and their animal trials every day. You know what they did? This pig. Horrible story. Horrible story. This pig eats this kid. Eats a kid. Eats a fucking kid. Margaret. He the pig ate a kid. So what do we do? What what do you think we do? Like what do you think the course of action should be? You walk up, you shoot the pig in the head, <laughs> and we eat it, and we all move on with our lives, right? No, no, that's not what we do, Margaret. What do we do? Because we live in crazy, topsy-turvy Europe. What do we do, Margaret? 14-day trial on this pig. All this money spent on this pig. I've been paid to do something to a pig. I've been paid to make someone do something to a pig that we could have just done. We could have done it in the courtroom. We could have just, you know, fired up, just lit a fire right there in the well of the courtroom and had a pig roast. And we all could have hung out and had a good time. It would have been a family gathering. <laughs> could have discussed, you know, better parenting skills about not letting your kid play with pigs. 
<laughs> but no, we skip all we <laughs> we skipped all that and just complain that this pig, this pig Margaret ate this kid on a Friday. You know how many times they said Friday? And you know what? I'm not going to lie, this is between me and you Margaret. It's the kid's fucking fault. It's that kid <laughs> that kid shouldn't. That kid was too close. The kid was on all fours, had an apple in its mouth. Like the kid was asking for it, Margaret. And I couldn't I didn't want to say that cuz I mean you know, I got I got mouths to feed too. We've got little Timmy and Jimmy over here. You know, the last time Margaret and I spoke up in trial, somebody called me a witch. You know, you can get away with one person calling you a witch, but when you get multiple people, you're fucked, Margaret. Yeah. You are fucked. You are on the spit roast with a pig getting burned alive. And I don't want that. Remember what happened to old Sam Thompson? <laughs> old Sam Thompson, he stood up and he was like, why are we putting pigs on trial? You know what they did? They burned him at the stake, Margaret. Burned him next to his own pig. <laughs> his first mistake, he said something about the pig, but when he started talking about getting those flies out of town on Friday at 3.30, that's when they <laughs> drew the line. He's like, they're, they're flies. They're not going to listen to you. He's a witch. Burn him. Yeah. I saw him convert with the Lucifers. <laughs> you know who doesn't follow contracts? <laughs> People who follow Satan. <laughs> Pretty much the entirety of the animal kingdom, though, was subject to the human rule of law. In the appendix of his book, Evans lists some 200 cases of animal oh, executions. And these are just the ones whose records have survived Europe's tumultuous history. There were executions of bulls, horses, eels, dogs, sheep, and perhaps most curiously... Dolphins, <laughs> which he gives no information on other than they were tried and executed in Marcel in, in 1596. That's kind of interesting. What the fuck did the dolphin do? Well, I mean, we've talked about this before. Some dolphins get a little too frisky. So, <laughs> again, going back to the bestiality, maybe maybe if a dolphin was making a little <laughs> sweet love to somebody, he shouldn't have been. <laughs> The dolphin was tried and convicted of rape. <laughs> the queen the Queen of England went out for a little dip in the water and you know, Mr. Squeaky the dolphin came by and <laughs> Dolphin's like she was asking for it. She is in the water. She's wearing a swimsuit. Like you see how you know how revealing those are. It's the one piece with the stripes on it. It's the one piece that goes from ankle to neck. I mean, seriously, who shows their earlobes these days? Whores do, that's who. <laughs> She's like, I'm a queen. Well, you weren't a queen the last seven times you came out here. <laughs> I was the king of your world there, honey bunch. <laughs> you get caught fucking me one time, queen, and, and then you, oh, guess who's on trial now? There were a great range of punishments for such critters, which weren't always sentenced to death. Rats, for instance, were sent a friendly letter of advice in order to induce them to quit any house in which their presence is deemed undesirable. <laughs> nice. And they just shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> or eat part of it. They just rip it in half and go build a nest. <laughs> I feel like that's just when I go out and yell at my dog. It's like, stop pooping there. <laughs> Quit being a dog. <laughs> you know what you did. Uh, he's like, yeah, I know what I did. I was a dog. I mean, this is the crazy thing because you're picturing like a guy. Like you said, you know, this is, you know, 1500. So, you know, this is the kind of the powdered wig sort of era. So you're picturing a guy in in this you know in a kind of official regalia with a with a powdered wig on his face and he goes into he goes just walks into this wall and knocks on it <laughs> then a rat comes out <laughs> and he's like see this eviction notice <laughs> no he pins it to the he pins it to the jerry hole on the wall and leaves it there <laughs> <laughs> you have 30 days to vacate <laughs> then the rat goes back to his rat family, all 10,000 kids, <laughs> and it's like, look, guys, um, we're going to have to we're, we're going to have to move. And then one of the kids is like, Dad, we're rats like we can't read. 
<laughs> We're better than that, son. Never call yourself a rat. We're better than this. We're better than that. We're not like those shitty Johnsons next door. <laughs> See, that's how we should have prevented the Black Death, is we should we should have just, you know, evicted all the rats from the ships. Yeah. We should have just marched up there with some official papers, and then, you know, 13 million people wouldn't have died. Well, you know there's some dude that, so, you know, these two guys that try to evict these rats... You know, one dude's like, "Listen, my my rats haven't left. They're not they're not following this these rules that they need to follow." And there's some guy who's totally bullshit. It's like, "Oh no, my rat totally left." Yeah, I talked yeah. to him and he left. You know, it's like we had a what? cup of tea over it. And we yeah. I explained the situation, and he he understood it was for the best. I hear they ha- I hear you know he's doing well for himself. <laughs> some somebody eavesdropping is just like. I, just kill me. I'm I'm gonna go lay with some pigs because this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's a witch. <laughs> I've lost all hope in humanity, honey. We're evicting rats, Margaret. <laughs> I had to write an eviction rats. notice for a family of rats. I didn't even know what to call it. I wrote "rat family" in the blank space <laughs> on the line. I wrote "rat family." This is my life, Margaret. When I gave it to Brian, he's like, you dumbass, they're not the rat family. You know, I went to law school. I went to law school. <laughs> I spent years of my life learning the law. I was, I was supposed to be a champion for good. I'm evicting rats. <laughs> this is my life. She's like, well, you know, may- maybe you can get on that serious case I just heard about. Uh, apparently there was a dolphin that raped the queen. Oh my God, Margaret. <laughs> Margaret. Oh my God, Margaret. I swear to God, if you, if you say one word about this, I'm going to go outside and say you're a witch. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. But honey, but honey, the dolphin, I mean, it's a serious thing. I drink from that water. You hear the door open. My wife's a witch. My <laughs> wife's a witch. She put a curse on me. She's... She's in league with the desolate one. <laughs> she turned me into a mute. I'm mute <laughs> because of her. <laughs> and in one case, he adds a sh- a sow and a she ass. They actually a she ass. So uh, I'm going with female donkey. Oh, female donkey. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're condemned to be hanged <laughs> on appeal. On appeal, so apparently they get an appeal. <laughs> There's an appeals process. So the so the so the sow and the and the female donkey, the she ass, so she ass and and she pig go outside, and they're like, "This was a grave miscarriage of justice." We'll get them on appeal, on appeal, and after a new trial, a new trial. They were sentenced to be simply knocked on the head. So what are we, what are we calling our lawyer guy? Is it just is it just Lawyer Bob? Is that what we're calling him? Uh, yeah, let's call him Lawyer Bob. All right, so Lawyer Bob, he's in here for the she ass. You know, he he jokes with her a little bit because they're in you know the privacy. He's like, she ass. Yeah, that's that's what I call my wife. You know, she's a witch. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard. He's like, all right, so we lost this trial, so you know you're you're probably gonna get put down. I'm sorry for that, but you know at least I'm done wasting my time with this bullshit. <laughs> and he opens the door, and the judge walks in. The judge is like, "Lawyer Bob, have you asked your uh, your person if you would uh, if if they would like to have a, a retrial? You know, if they if they like to appeal, what? Yeah, would they like a retrial?" And he's like, "It's a fucking cow, and a, it's a pig, and a and a donkey. They can't ask for a retrial." Well, let's try. Susie, would you like a retrial? <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> Son of a. God damn it! <laughs> Wish I could say this judge was a witch. What was that? Nothing, sir. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, Your Honor. Damn right. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna go take a swim in the water real quick. I heard there's some frisky dolphins out there. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Tom from the Say What Podcast, and I would love it if you'd swing over to SayWhatPodcast.com to check us out as soon as you're done listening to this show. We handpick real news articles to poke fun at every week, like a lady from Florida attacking her boyfriend with a ceramic squirrel. 
for kids rubbing chapstick in their eyes to get high, or the guy who got arrested for repeatedly having sex with an inflatable pool shark. Yeah, I think you get the point. So tune into the Say What Podcast every Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, and at SayWhatPodcast.com. Oh, the story's getting better. (laughs) It's getting better. But capital punishment often went way beyond the brutality of hanging. Even the innocent faced our wrath of judgment. (laughs) When a Swiss town was gifted a moose by the great naturalist uh, Leonard Thurneiser in the late 1500s, townspeople looked upon the strange animal as a most dangerous demon, and a pious old woman finally rid the town of the dreaded beast by feeding it an apple stuck full of broken needles. (laughs) Oh, God. It's the Halloween story come to life. Right? That's probably where it came from. Because, you know, that whole, that whole you know, kids eating poison candy and razor blades in the apples or whatever. You know, that whole thing is like an urban legend. There hasn't been an actual case of that happening. Yeah. But it probably came from here. And really, how is she a pious old woman if she's feeding the moose a fucking needle apple? It's just well, I mean, it's a moose. So probably- and why are they broken needles? Like that's just insult to injury. Broken needles, like they could just be regular needles and do the same fucking damage. Do you think it was just Granny Sue who just got pissed off because this moose kept eating all her flowers? So she's like, "I'm going <laughs> to show this demon animal what's up. <laughs> Eat this apple, you wretched bastard." Well, I just, I mean, like, think about the moose. The moose, you know, the guy shows up and he's like. Oh, look at this beautiful moose. I know what I'll do. I'll give it to this lovely town full of people. And then the moose is like, you know, whatever. And so they, so he walks in and he's like, look, I've given you a moose. And then the people are like, demon! And they throw shit at it. And the moose is like, I was hanging out in the cold and I was just eating some fucking, I was rooting through the snow trying to find grass because I'm a moose and that's what I do. That you know, I can't even. I have to actually dig in the snow with for, to look for stuff shit to eat. Do you have to dig a hole to find your roast turkey? No, no, you don't. And even if you did, what do you get to use? You use hands. You know what I have to use to dig? I'd use my fucking nose. Dig a hole with your nose. You tell me how it feels. I didn't even want to be here. I was fine where I was out in the wild. Yeah, I was out in the wild. I was chilling out. My big moose <laughs> antlers. You see these things? You know how much tail? You know how much moose tail <laughs> I get with this shit? But you know, I haven't had moose tail in months because I had to move to this shitty ass place. And none of the women here will fuck me. Fuck you guys and fuck that old lady. I'm going to spit on her. Puh. Eat her flowers. And not in a sexy way. Oh, now I feel bad. She's bringing me an apple. Oh, sweet old lady. I'll eat your flowers in the sexy way. Oh, God, <laughs> my stomach hurts. Why am I shitting blood? <laughs> I should see a doctor. Do they have (laughs) moose doctors here? Do you have a moose doctor? Why doesn't anybody speak moose? (laughs) (laughs) Why are you all hitting me? (laughs) This was a terrible Friday. (laughs) And on a Friday... Fed me a broken needle apple on a Friday, pious uh. old bitch. <laughs> uh, let's see. And creatures that were themselves victims, especially of bestiality, oh, would, be here we horrib- go. would be horrifically executed along with their offending human. So, so essentially. Th- <laughs> so you'd kill the sheep and then the sheep would die. They'd be like. You know, you you get caught fucking a pig. They'd kill the pig, and then they'd kill you. Or maybe they'd kill you together. And they'd be like, is this pig or Dave? I don't... I'm uh, still delicious. I mean, the seasoning's great. (laughs) Oh, here we go. This is is the gold. You ready for the gold? I'm ready for the gold. Okay. In one case, a mule condemned to be burned alive together with a man... Oh, no, we're not the gold yet. 
but but this is this is still pretty good. A mule condemned to be burned alive together with a man guilty of they call they called it buggery. I mean, how cute is that? <laughs> that is cute. That's cute. They called it buggery. <laughs> so that's kind of how that's how the 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 creepy husbands got away with it. It's like, hey, honey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go check out the animals on the farm, and you know, I'm gonna go do a little buggery. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours later, she walks into the police station. He's a buggerer. He's a bugger. <laughs> he was bugging the donkeys. He comes in behind her, trying to pull his pants up. My wife's a witch. My wife's a witch. <laughs> Uh, why you put me in handcuffs? Oh, damn it. She got here first, didn't she? <laughs> Donkey was asking for it. <laughs> it was going, Ee-oh! and that's code for bugger me. Bugger me. Bugger the fucking shit out of me. I heard it. You heard it. Sarah heard it. Don't let her lie to you. You have a problem, Tom. Well, yeah, I do. I didn't finish because I was trying to tr- turn my wife in for being a witch. <laughs> Apparently the donkey was inclined to kick, so the executioner cut off its feet before setting it aflame. Ah, that seems rude. That's yeah, that's harsh. Uh let's see. Oh, oh we're we're and see, then this is the gift that just keeps on giving. Here we go. On the flip side though, Europeans were capable of compassion toward the beast they very much relied upon for sustenance and labor. For instance, in one bestiality case in 1750, the victim, a donkey, was acquitted <laughs> on the ground that the was the victim of violence. While the convent's prior signed a certificate noting that he'd known her, we're talking about the donkey now, known her for four years and that she had always shown herself to be a virtuous and well-behaved both at home <laughs> and abroad. So the donkey was was let go, and the guy was killed. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like there's a love triangle going on. <laughs> a female donkey was acquitted of charges of bestiality due to witnesses to the animal's virtue and good behavior, while her human co-accused was sentenced to death. No, no, Steve, Steve, you know, this donkey would never do anything like that. It was totally Steve. We Craig's like, it's okay, it's okay, donkey, I'll take you home with me. That lawyer walks in, he's like, well, I got the donkey off. <laughs> <laughs> so did he. <laughs> Anybody, anybody, come on, fuckers. We're, we're at an animal trial. Bring some humor into this. Yeah, there's no room for levity at the <laughs> buggering event. <laughs> Pardon me. There's no room. There's no room for a joke at the bugger trial. <laughs> the buggering trial. Oh, yeah. Uh, the trials of pests, like locusts and weevils, though, reached a comic absurdity that's likely unequaled in European history. Oh, so no, we're it's we're getting better. Apparently, <laughs> apparently we haven't reached a certain level of absurdity yet by saying that donkeys get pardoned and pigs get, you know, killed after a lengthy legal process. Uh in the 16th century, the insects most famous Oh, God. (laughs) The insect's most famous public defender was Bartholomew Bartholomew Chansony or Chansony. So it really was was Lawyer Bob. (laughs) Oh, God. Played by Colin Firth in 1993's film The Hour of the Pig. So there's a there's a flick made on this whole thing. I didn't know this. There was a movie <laughs> about like the matlock for bugs. <laughs> so what this what this lawyer Bartholomew do? Uh, he had first demonstrated his prowess defending rats, which had feloniously eaten up and wantonly destroyed the barley crop of the province <laughs> of Aud- of Audern of oh Autun in France. 
a crafty bit of lawyering, he argued it was impossible to summon all his furry clients to court and they should be excused, writes Evans, on the ground of the length and difficulty of the journey and the serious perils which attended it, owing to the unwearied vigilance of their mortal enemies, the cats, (laughs) who watched all their movements and with fell intent lay in wait for them at every corner and passage. Uh, You know, know this lawyer Bartholomew went home that night and banged the crap out of his wife like, yeah, I lowered the fuck out of this today. You know what I did? You know what I did today? Beth, Beth, Elizabeth, (laughs) guess what I did today? I got rats off. Not not in a weird way. They put rats on trial? They put rats, rats on trial. Like, you would think, hey, let's just kill the rats. Nope, we put them on trial. But you know what they didn't do? Convict them. <laughs> not today. You know why? Because Bartholomew said no. Bartholomew <laughs> said no. Bartholomew said no to the uh. rats. No to the rats being prosecuted. <laughs> That's why Bartholomew has all these nice wigs for my lawyering. Because that's what I do. I get rats off. Guess what? Next week, I'm going to get a donkey off. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> she's like, well, you know, there's a lot of women getting prosecuted, you know, falsely for being witches. Maybe you should do some good and help them out. Um, um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, really, <laughs> please. I have yeah. real problems to deal with. <laughs> I have... I mean, you're talking about women that are probably witches. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I've had my doubts about you at times. (laughs) Honey, I mean, I'm a man. You're a woman. This is science. You know, I know your brain's, you know, scientifically proven to be smaller. I mean, I am a man and you're a woman. And I mean, it's it's fair to assume that a good majority of you really are witches and you should all be burned at the stake. But. (laughs) I'm talking about the rats now, and you know they don't they don't deserve this. They don't deserve <laughs> this, Elizabeth. They don't deserve this kind of treatment. Equal treatment for equal rats. Uh, see, Richard, this is what happens when you don't give women's rights. <laughs> Men put rats and donkeys on trial, <laughs> and there's nobody to tell them that they're stupid. <laughs> this is true. This is, you know, actually, that is kind of true, because once we allowed women to vote, then I'm sure, like, the women in Europe, because this happened, you know, <laughs> women were allowed to vote in, like, the 1900s, and so at one point, they're like, all right, well, you know, here you go, women, you have the right to vote, and one woman's like, um, yeah, are we still putting pigs on trial? <laughs> and if we are, why? <laughs> well, I mean... They have to. I mean, all. I mean, they're animals. They deserve due process. Are you? Are you being racist against the animals? <laughs> I mean, you just earned. You just got your rights. I mean, can't the pig have rights too? I mean, this pig killed a child on a Friday. Are you just gonna let that slide? Are you guys sure you're not witches? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. What do you mean? What do you mean? All the men have been voted out of the office. What happened? <laughs> Now, at the t- at this time, the animal trials were brought to ecclesi- uh, ecclesiastical courts as states were not fully developed as we would recognize them today. And the court's authority lay with the power of excommunication, which bars you from communication and the spiritual advantages of the church, which is known as oh, some another word. I'd, I'm I, I'm done trying to pronounce words. But we all know what excommunication is. Basically, they cut, you know, because, you know, in in Europe, especially, you know, pre-1800s, well, even during the 1800s, very Catholic, you know. I mean, Rome's there. It's where the Pope lives with his Pope hat and his Pope car. I mean, he didn't have a Pope car, but I'm sure he had, like, a Pope horse and buggy. Yeah, yeah. So they basically say, like, pig, you you, go. Go away, pig. Yeah. They cut cut you off. They'll be like, that'll do, pig. That'll do. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of probably went against them because I think pigs, it only takes like two generations before the, for them to become feral. <laughs> yeah. So you get enough pigs excommunicated, now you just have a bunch of wild pigs on the outside of your uh, your town. You know, that's probably because they have wild pig. You know what I mean? There's wild pigs and stuff all over Europe today. That's probably what happened. It's all the pigs they sent to exile. <laughs> 
And now the wild pigs are showing up and they're like, chickens are coming home to roost. <laughs> and the pigs. The pigs are coming home to roost too. All those ch- they, They're ex Okay, so... Okay, I, I'm I'm rubbing my face now because I'm trying to understand the concept of excommunicating a cow. <laughs> like a priest walks up to the cow and he's like, look, I understand that you kicked a child last Sunday and I'm here to tell you that that's not okay. And after <laughs> a lengthy church court process we've decided that you're no longer welcome you're no longer welcome at our congregation bessie uh. <laughs> i know it, it may seem unfair now but you'll you'll learn your way you'll have to go fornicate with the lutherans or one of the other dog <laughs> religions fuck if i know what they do <laughs> <laughs> he starts walking back to the commune bessie looks around starts falling it's like no bessie no you have to go. But don't don't you have to be like okay for Catholics, don't you have to be Catholic in order to be excommunicated from the Catholic Church? So does that mean that we were baptizing the cows? At at this point I wouldn't doubt it. Were we were were we christening the cows? How did the cows take confirmation classes? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're arguing with a group of people that put these animals on trial. <laughs> And it makes me wonder, like back in back in these times, we always talk about how how difficult they were, and you know how how they had to struggle to survive. But obviously, these people had a lot of time on their hands, and they could be like, "Hey, we're going to the Friday afternoon trial." They had tons of time on their hands. Apparently, they're quite bored. Yeah, they're bored. <laughs> they're like, I don't know. I'm. I mean, we plowed the field today. We plowed the field, and you know that that ox didn't really go as fast as it normally did. Probably a witch, <laughs> <laughs> or it might be having sex with a human. I don't know which. You know, let's let's just <laughs> we don't have TV yet, so let's see what happens. Need some entertainment. Uh, let's see. <laughs> hey, Greg, go fuck that cow so we can have a trial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. Can somebody please fuck a pig? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just butcher one? Oh my god, are we savages here? Is that what we've what we've come to? There's a process, Tommy, <laughs> and you would do well to respect that. <laughs> You'll learn that when you when you get older. Old Tommy thinks we can butcher a pig without fucking it, crazy kid. We should excommunicate that guy. Yeah, apparently, apparently you don't. Yeah, apparently, we don't sleep with the animals before we kill them. <laughs> what kind of fucking world is that? <laughs> I bet Tommy's a witch. <laughs> uh oh. So it's okay. So. This this term, I think it's called anathema. Uh, it's a sort of excommunication for beings like animals not belonging to the church. So basically they're saying, look, if you if you thought about becoming so the priest is walking up to the cow to excommunicate, it's look and it's like, look, I understand you're not Catholic, but if you thought about becoming Catholic, you're not welcome. <laughs> and the cow's like, uh, yeah, I know. I know. It's it's a difficult thing to come to grips to, but, you know, we, we just don't want you in our congregation. We all have our burdens, and this is yours. I mean, you're a beast of burdens. <laughs> you're a beast of <laughs> Satan, Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> don't you sass me, Betsy. I'm a man of God. <laughs> I swear to God, I will fuck you and <laughs> then take you to court and then kill you. <laughs> and then eat you. Because that's how God wants it. Oh, such a prehistoric kind of just mindset. <laughs> so we were kind of talking about like the pilgrims and, you know, the the first group of people to come over to America. And I wonder, like all these animals like rushing to get on this ship, too. It's like, listen, you don't fuck us and eat us on this ship, right? Is this what the new world's about? Freedom for all? I mean, I don't care if you eat us. Just please don't fuck us first. <laughs> God, I wish we spoke people. <laughs> we could just tell them, look, like, we understand you're going to kill us, but could you stop fucking us in the <laughs> end? Could you stop cornholing <laughs> us before you do it? Because it's just rude. It's fucking rude. <laughs> oh, uh, there apparently there was a case about a priest that once uh, excommunicated an orchard because its fruits lured kids away from mass. <laughs> All right, tree, you got to leave. 
<laughs> guys, Why don't it? you make like a tree <laughs> and get out of here? <laughs> I told that orchard. Uh, let's see. Uh, and the, apparently the orchard lay barren until the Duchess of Burgundy ordered the curse lifted. This was quite obviously a serious sentence meant for the most pernicious insect and rodent offenders. And no pest plagued 16th century France more than the weevil. And, a f- and few towns suffered their wrath worse than St. Julian. Though it never went to trial, the first complaint against the insects was made by grape growers in 1545, resulting in a proclamation for public prayers to account for sins and thus will the weevils away. And it worked! Alas, 30 years later, the weevils returned, and the town was forced to take them to court. <laughs> All right, it's worked 30 years ago, said my grandpappy, so we got to do it again. Was he your grandpappy drunk all the time? Yeah, it doesn't matter, though. He's, he's a good man. I mean, he's not, he's not a witch like his wife was. Yeah. Isn't that your grandma? Well, she had some issues. She thought we shouldn't fuck the pigs before we <laughs> eat them. Women, right? Am I right, guys? Women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and April 13th, 1587, with a lawyer named Antoine Filoni... Assigned as the Weevil's public defender, he <laughs> argued that his clients had been he argued that his clients had been placed on earth by God, mm-hmm. who would never have put them here without the sustenance to survive. It was just a bit unfortunate that his this sustenance had to be the town's crops. The prosecution, however, asserted the town's dominion over the visiting weevils, that although the animals were created before man, they were intended to be subordinate to him and subservient to his use, and that this was indeed the reason of their prior creation. So we're bringing the Bible into this. So so he was saying that insects came first, then man. So man uh, is the uh, leader of the animals is that what he's saying basically basically he's saying that <laughs> you know weevils if if we're reading genesis like everything got made and then we got made last and because we got made last we're the boss so some lady raises her hand she's like well didn't women come after men technically which 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 <laughs> she's a witch don't listen to her evil logic it makes sense but only if you're a witch now we gotta have a new trial <laughs> You tainted the jury pool. Good <laughs> job, Sarah. You tainted the jury pool. Fuck this whole thing up. We're gonna burn you next. We're gonna burn you next to this pig. <laughs> uh, great. You know that rat trial we had up next. We're gonna have to push that back a week. Thanks a lot, Sarah. <laughs> These trials are just piling up. So we've come to the central theological paradox of animal trials. The sins of villagers supposedly brought in the pests, but so too did God intentionally include them in his grand plan for Earth. We as humans are to hold dominion over these creatures and to deal with them as we please. That means dragging them into court to answer for their transgressions. But is it not God who controls them? Why else would public prayers effectively drive the weevils away? Uh, apparently the, the citizens of St. Julian sought a compromise by providing attractive land near town where the weevils could freely congregate. So they did. They're like, Hey, well, well, how about we just evict you? We, we, we bought, we, we got this piece of woods. I, I, what I'm thinking about right now is that there's, there's a lineage of people that can trace their historical, you know, it's like, Hey, I just found out that my, my great, 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 great grandfather was a lawyer back in 1587. <laughs> <laughs> he opened like, let's see some of the things that he did. The Great Rat Trial, huh? That seems interesting. You know, I, I wonder if that was like a gang. Maybe, maybe my, maybe my great grand, you know, the great 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 grandfather like put away this evil gang in Great Britain, huh? Gang of what? Oh, oh, we weevils and rats. <laughs> was it a? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Did you say weevils? Was that like their name, like the tunnel snakes? Like, ooh, we're the tunnel snakes. The tunnel snakes rule. No, no, these were these were actual weevils. The trial lasted eight months. <laughs> and <laughs> the trial lasted eight months, and the decision has been lost to history. According to Evans, the last page of court records has, bestro- has been destroyed by 
quote rats or <laughs> bugs or some sort. At some point, they're like, "How long have we been going at this trial? Eight months." Uh, f- All right, just destroy everything. This is the stupidest thing ever. Yeah. No, see, the weevils are like, "Fuck this decision, Tom. Go, go, <laughs> go eat the decision. Go weevil on that decision. Go weevil. Just take it and build a nest." Oh God. Okay. Here's the brutal irony of animal trials. In pulling even the lowest bug into our justice system, we personify them. But then in brutalizing them for their supposed misdeeds, we lower ourselves to the brutality we would expect from wild beasts. By this logic, animals are simply automations starved of free will, programmed to eat, sleep, mate, and repeat, as so many philosophers throughout history have argued. They're instead capable of not only making their own decisions, but engaging in complex behaviors, like the case of the Friars pigs egging each other on to (laughs) commit murder. So these pigs co-conspired with each other to commit murder instead of, you know, just succumbing to nature and becoming pigs. But now we live in the world today where uh, activists are fighting to grant chimpanzees personhood and therefore the same legal rights that we humans enjoy with their paternity ridiculous animal tri- with their patently ridiculous animal trials it seems that europeans were in a way actually on the right track so so it's the circle of life we're coming back to giving animals trials and all the rights that humans have yeah that's a good point like if if chimpanzees are given personhood then does that mean we can take them to court <laughs> he threw a poo at me. Oh, man. He if, threw a poo in my face. If so, we are definitely, that's our next podcast is we're just going to sit in these animal trials and kind of do a serial style podcast on these. Uh... Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, see, you could. You could do it like cereal where, where they think the chimpanzee did it. And then we find out that it's a be like the real, <laughs> the real monster is man. Uh, I still can't get over the fact that, you know, somebody, if they trace their lineage back, they're going to see that their family, <laughs> you know, did this whole animal trial. I mean, you said eight months. Like, I was like, oh, God, eight days. No, eight months your great-grandfather spent on this trial. Eight months of time and money spent <laughs> on a trial against Weevils. Again, I'm gonna say I, you know, that guy was going to work every single day, kissing his wife Elizabeth goodbye, and you know she's like, you know, if we just had the right to vote, we could end a lot of this stupid bullshit. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I guess do you want to throw out any Richard's closing thoughts on this animal trial episode? You know, like I kind of skimmed the article, and like I was like, oh, this seems this seems you know funny. This seems like something funny to talk about, and. After now reading the article from from start to finish, I'm I'm just I'm sad. I feel I feel sad that we as a species did any of these things. Now I'm not saying that animals, you know, are subservient to us and that we should all treat, you know, animals like, you know, beasts to be tamed and subjugated and whatever that's that's i mean PETA, please put your bucket of blood down i'm not saying that animals are you know something that we just treat like human garbage or animal garbage but at the same time we spent time and money and and we had people that went to law school and wear powdered wigs and we had a trial against weevils for eight months. Like, come on, man. Well, you know what, Richard? If it if it wasn't for this nice little piece of history, you and I would not have had an hour to joke around about everything that happened. So I guess in a sense, despite all those animals going through this horrific event, you know, we at least got to laugh for an hour. If they, You know what? If that's the only purpose it served, then I'm I'm cool with it. All right, well, I will do a little bit of housekeeping. You do that. Visit our website. We're at languageofbromance.com. Follow us on Twitter. We're at languageofbro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languageofbromance.com. Eat the beaver. Don't fuck the beaver. Or beaver. And like us on Facebook. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and check us out on the Pocket Cast app. It's on iOS, Android, and Windows phone apps. And subscribe and leave a review on iTunes and Stitcher. And don't forget to check us out on the Pod Bros Network. Best podcast site on the internet. And if you're in the need for some headbuds, go to tweaked.audio.com. Use the promo code LBARMY and you'll get 33% off. All right. Well, is there anything else before I close her out? No, I'm just, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go and cry that, that this was, this was, this was us. This was people at one point. Dark, dark stain on the human uh, evolutionary chain. It was, it really was. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the bromance we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we eat the beaver. And then put it on trial. <laughs> and then kill it. Well, we put it we put it on trial and then we eat the beaver. No, we wait. <laughs> we call it we call it a witch and then <laughs> we fuck it and then we eat it? No, we put it on trial. Oh god. <laughs>